Hello folks, Ryan here with Natural Aquariums, and today we're working on the 20 long again. Um, if you saw the last episode, we just filled it with water, and now it's time to introduce some CO2. So, come check it out. So what we're going to do here is hook the CO2 up to the tank, start injecting CO2. Uh, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, connect the regulator and just start with this end, the CO2 tank end, and move it to the aquarium end. So uh, first thing we need to do is uh, attach this regulator. I don't have a whole lot of space, so I'm going to attach it um, something like this, um, just downward uh, on on its side like this. Um, that shouldn't affect the performance of it at all. Um, but uh, what we do need is a little gasket in here. And um, some people, and I've even done this in the past, um, you can put uh, plumber's tape on the threads here. And um, that's not a bad idea, but uh, the problem with that is if you get any on the outside of the threads here, and, and some may be pushed out, you don't want any of that plumber's tape um, going into your regulator. Um, this is a rather inexpensive regulator. Um, it's something that I've used before. I think it works just fine. Um, I know most people recommend a, a dual stage regulator. Um, this is just, uh, once again, a little cheapy, but uh, it's worked good for me in the past and hopefully it will again here. So, um, we still need to make a good connection between here, and every time you fill up a uh, CO2 tank, they should give you one of these, and it's just a, a little piece of plastic, but it uh, this gets smashed in here and, and serves as a gasket. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in here, get it bolted on, and then we'll uh, check on back. Almost forgot to mention one other thing you should do before attaching the regulator is just purge a little air out of here. So we're just going to open it up briefly, um, purge a little air. If there's any, uh, once again, we don't want any solids going through the uh, regulator there. Um, that's going to jam things up, cause problems. Um, some people say, you know, even dangerous things can happen because you're dealing with uh, uh, pressurized air there. So we'll just crack this open a bit. And that uh, should uh, should clear any debris that may have gotten in there during transport or whatever. So, good to go now. Okay, made that connection nice and firm. Um, one thing I like to do is tighten that up um, about a day or so after running it. Um, CO2 can be rather cold and, you know, just the size of things change. And it's amazing you'll, you'll get maybe an eighth of a turn, maybe even a quarter inch turn out of it. Uh, went ahead and turned on the gas there, so it's uh, reading about uh, 600 PSI. So that uh, shows us the tank is full and ready to rock and roll. Next thing uh, will be to add the airline. Um, the airline is already on here from when I used it before. Um, get up off the ground here. Um, but, uh, the regulator itself came with this, uh, special, uh, CO2 airline. Um, some people say that, uh, CO2 can leak outside of, like, a silicone line, so it's best to use this more, like, uh, I assume it's like a vinyl or something. And then, of course, we don't want any water coming from the aquarium, coming back into the regulator, so we just put the, uh, check valve there. All right, so since we got the work on the ground done there, we can take a look at the tank. Um, this is just a few hours after my previous video, episode two, where we fill it up with water. You can still see some uh, bubbles coming up from that. Um, now, you know, what, what, what's the next step, you may ask? Um, well, generally, what we would put in there would be a, a bubble counter like this. And so um, the CO2 comes in here comes out of this tube here. You fill this up with water. It's got a little tiny bit of water in it. And then you can see and count how many bubbles are coming out. So then once you have your bubble counter um, set up and you know how much CO2 you're injecting, um, you need a, a way to disperse that into the water. 
Um, and so what's generally used is a uh, diffuser of some sort. Um, this is a diffuser that's made for like a hang on the back filter so it just goes in line. Um, so the water comes in one end, CO2 comes in another end, and then the CO2 water goes out the, the final end. I think maybe I got the those backwards, but uh, we're actually not using a canister filter on this aquarium. Um, and the, uh, the diffuser I'm using, it kind of serves as a bubble counter as well. So um, we're going to toss this aside and I'll uh, show you what I got. All right, so we're going to go kind of old school here, a little blast for, from the past, at least for, for me. Um, this is a uh, diffuser that I had used a long time ago, um, back when uh, I was just using a DIY CO2, um, hooking up, filling up uh, two liter bottles, and then I would pump it into this. Um, the way this works is kind of ingenious. The, the CO2 comes down here. Um, bubble comes out and then the bubble travels up this ladder so this is called a bubble ladder here and so it'll travel up this side go back up the other side up this side back and forth and back and forth and back and forth what's cool is you can actually see the bubble getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it reaches the top it's probably not the most efficient way um, but uh, like I said we're not using a canister filter on this aquarium so um was just looking for a different way to to do things um we already got the blue background on here and just trying some different things with this aquarium and seeing how they work um i was cleaning this up i dug this out of a cupboard full of a whole bunch of fish tank crap and uh went to take off this suction cup up here it's not as nice as these suction cups it was a uh, uh, I don't know, one of these kind of clear, harder plastic ones and tried to pull that out to clean it up a little bit and it broke right there. So got this little like clip suction cup here um, that was in that in that cupboard as well. So we're just going to try to use that. It looks like it should work pretty well, but uh, let's get it hooked up and find out. Okay, so it's the following day here now and as you can see, the, the plants um, have kind of straightened out. I actually gave them a little bit of help. Um, there's like three stems that I went ahead and trimmed and then put some uh, little uh, uh, plant weights on the bottom of them and then just kind of strategically set them in areas. You can see the plant weight on the uh, far left here. Um, the other two are behind uh, those rocks, I believe. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's uh, also, in addition to that, I've, I've set up some more equipment on this tank, uh, including the CO2. So we'll take a closer look at that here and, uh, and also the filtration. Okay, reaching around the uh, side of the tank here on the left side of the tank, if you're looking in the front of it, um, we can see the bubble ladder here. Um, I've tried to gain, get video of it. A couple of times, I think it's just too much motion for my camera. Um, not working with anything fancy here, that's for sure. Um, but you get you get the idea. The bubble comes out. Eh, I think I got it working okay. Um, the bubble comes out of the black hose there and works its way up both sides of the ladder. It uh, switches from one side to the other side of the ladder, back and forth, back and forth, and goes up. And as it goes up, it um, some of it gets dispersed into the water. The bubbles get a little bit smaller as they go. Um, can't really show you the top because I added this uh, filter on the side of it here. Um, so any of some of the bubbles that make it out of the top will get swept into the filter. Uh, so that was kind of by design there. Don't, probably don't need my flashlight on anymore now. There we go. Um, but yeah, I just added uh, one of these hang on the back style filters. Just took it off uh, another tank I had it on. And uh, things are looking pretty good. So now we, what I like to do is use a drop checker. Um, 
This will give you a quick indication of your levels of CO2. Um, so we'll uh, go ahead and grab some of this. Um, this is uh, 4 DKH. And so this is water and it's uh, 4 degrees of carbonate hardness. Uh, so that's what that stands for. So we put a little bit of that in there. And then oh, I gotta reach over here. Um, just use a couple of drops of pH indicator solution. Um, this bottle is ancient. Um, can't even see the date on it anymore, but it'll work just fine for this purpose. So it should be noted the light just came on. Um, I set this light to come on from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Like I said, it's in my office here. Um, and then also from 7 p.m. to um, 11 p.m. Right now it is about 8 o'clock. So it's been it's been on for about an hour or so. But, um, you know, the, earlier today, um, towards the end of that four hours, these uh the glossostigma was uh beginning to pearl up pretty good so i think we're doing well but we need to know how much um what kind of level we're we're doing and and there's tests you can perform to um know exactly how many parts per million co2 are in your tank but like i said this would give a good quick reference and a good idea um so i'm just gonna get a little bit of this water in here and that's not always as easy to say as done. I'm going to take this off camera right here so I don't spill any more water on my carpet. So you just kind of work it in there and there we go. So we got water in there. And now we need a couple of drops of the pH indicator solution. And you probably want to go somewhere about, hmm, I usually do three drops. So one, two, three. And then we'll work it back in there. And there we go. So it's, um, it's a nice dark blue. I don't know if you can see it. The lighting's not the greatest here. Maybe... Turn the flashlight back on. Yeah, it looks pretty black on the on the video there. Um, but it's a nice dark blue. And so we'll put this in the tank. Um, the gases will go up in there. It'll change the pH of, of this water here uh, and the indicator solution. I don't know exactly how it works, but um, if it's green, it's ideal. If it's blue, it's too low. And if it's yellow, um, it's too high. So you want to turn down the CO2 or turn it off or something. Um, so, you know, do something about it if it gets too high. Because you can gas your fish. And unfortunately, I have done that before. You know, sorry to say. But, um, you know, definitely unfortunate and um, no fun and don't want to experience that again. Some of the fish died. Some of them lived. Um, but... Yeah, that's a, a, a certainly a risk that you need to consider when you're you're working with CO2. All right, so we got it in the tank, stuck to the wall there. Um, let me just pick this up and get a little bit closer. I put it on the right hand side here, away from the CO2 source, so we can get um, more accurate reading of of what's going on in there. Yeah, it looks kind of blue now. Um, you can see the uh, water level, so there's water up until there, and then there's just uh, the gases, so it's going to uh, measure the gases there. So we'll let this run for about two hours and then check back in, see what color it is. All right, it's been a couple hours. In fact, uh, it's been two hours and 48 minutes. It's 1048 now, getting ready for bed. And uh, the light here is about to shut off. And let's just take a look at the drop checker and see how things 
are turning out. So I don't know if you can see it with the blue background and whatnot, but this is uh, definitely a lot greener than it was and, you know, not all the way yellow. So uh, it's in pretty good, uh, pretty good shape for fish. Um, really, you know, the only thing we, we need here is, uh, is a heater. We've got, uh, plants and light and a filter that was on another aquarium. So this thing should, uh, cycle almost instantly. Um, a couple of these rocks were in other aquariums. Um, so, um, I'm going to try out this heater here. Um, you know, let me know in the comments if you guys have tried uh, this heater before. Um, I always like to try some new heaters. Although, you know, what I've found is, so far at least, is um, I just really like the Eheim Jaeger heaters first. This one, it's got a cool feature and it's got, you know, some controls to it uh, right here. It has a digital output of what the temperature is. Um, I've heard that the the output on here that what it displays is is not accurate um, I don't mind that so much just as long as uh, the heat is consistent so um, You know otherwise It's time to start thinking about what we're gonna put in here as far as uh life goes or animal life uh, fish or shrimp um, Feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments, and uh, I'll certainly consider those. And once again, I thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.